My parents really wanted to move, so I bought it for them. Huh? What do you mean? My husband used our savings to buy an apartment for his parents without discussing it with me. We just have to save up again. Anyway, I don't need you telling me what to do with my own money. Ah, he is totally gone. I felt nothing, not even sadness or anger, like I was suddenly pulled down into a purgatory of nothingness. And then, I slowly grabbed his hands. I met my husband Eric at my college party. He was sitting across from me on the sofa, and I noticed him glancing at me. As the hour passed by and the party was at its peak, he and I went out on the quiet corner of the lawn hitting up a conversation. We had the same hobbies and interests and it was exciting to chat with him. We exchanged our numbers and started dating. He proposed to me after two years when I was 25. It was my dream to marry Yang and start a family, so I said yes to him. We got a one-bedroom apartment close to his parents, and I quit my job and became a housewife as he requested. Soon after that, I got pregnant and had a son Mark. Around this time, my in-laws started inviting us to their house often. They never contacted me directly, but asked me through Eric. I understood that they really wanted to see their grandson. They actually adored Mark and bought a lot of toys for him. Mark, who was very attached to me, was quickly used to them. However, every time I was at their house, I got an awkward feeling. Stacy, if you are too busy with housework, you don't have to come over. We are happy just to see Eric and Mark. Um, it feels claustrophobic here. They seemed like they wanted to get rid of me. Mark was still little and cried when I wasn't around. I wasn't comfortable leaving him alone with elderly in-laws, so I stayed put no matter how they tried to throw me out. I guess they weren't pleased with my aloofness, that their attitude toward me became nastier. One day, when I was cleaning the house, I received a call from Eric. He was panicking over the phone because his mom called an ambulance for hitting her pinky against the table. He gave me the name of the hospital and told me to go ass up. She just banged her pinky. Why was I sent to check on her just for that? I just did the same a few minutes ago. I was about to protest, but he hung up on me. Reluctantly, I went out to the hospital. When I was walking toward the reception counter, I saw my mother-in-law sitting in the waiting room. She was chattering with other elderly. But when I called out to her, Aha! I bumped it a little. Eric is overreacting. Don't slack on chores and go home. Who exaggerated it by calling an ambulance? I stopped doing my chores to come here just for you. I don't deserve to be told slacking. As I started walking away, I heard her telling the others about me. My daughter-in-law is really bad at taking care of housework and so lazy. I don't know what to do with her. On top of it, she's mean. I couldn't hear after that and just kept walking. I complained to Eric when he got home that night. But he only said, Whatever, it's all good. And kept drinking beer. I got upset with his indifference. How the hell is it all good? God, you're annoying. Stop complaining. I'm exhausted from work. He got mad at me, and we started the Cold War. We didn't speak to each other for about a week. I became uneasy that Eric might not give me the living expense for the next month. He was in charge of handling the family finance, and I usually got a monthly allowance to make ends meet. If he didn't, I wouldn't have been able to do so. Too worried that I apologized to him, who willing to accept it, and we went back to our normal life like nothing ever happened. Who knew something bigger was to come? Eric dropped the bomb just three days after we made it up. His mom had trouble walking, so we were to move in with them. I, of course, refused. 
I plan to go back to work after Mark starts middle school. I can't continue looking after her. Well then, we are getting a divorce. You are a housewife, so you won't be able to support Mark. I will take custody. I couldn't retort to his comment. In fact, I was unemployed and didn't have the means to raise him. Even if I found a job now, where was I going to leave him? My parents lived with my brother, his wife, and their five kids. I couldn't put more weight on their shoulders. I had no choice but to accept his demand again. We were to break the contract of our apartment and move in with his parents at the end of the month. On the day of our move, his parents cheerfully welcomed Eric and Mark, but to me, they commanded the detailed rules of the house and instructed me to ask for their permission before I went out. There was nothing welcoming about it. Since then, their discrimination against me escalated. One day, I came back from grocery shopping a little before noon. I saw empty boxes of pizza on the kitchen counter, and it seemed like the family had just finished eating lunch. I clearly told them when I left, I will make lunch, so please wait for me. Oh, Stacy, we are craving pizza, so we ordered in. We left some for you on the dining table. Thank you. I went to the dining room and opened the box. There was one piece of pizza inside. I felt frustrated to be left out again. The piece wasn't even whole, with a chunk missing on the side. Probably Mark had a bite. I didn't even get a complete piece of pizza. I felt like Mark was even mocking me and my eyes became watery. Another time, the rain suddenly started while I was out. I had left our sneakers under the sun, so I rushed back home. When I got back, I found that my mother-in-law had already taken Eric and Mark's sneakers, but left mine out soaked in the rain. Eric and my father-in-law pretend to be oblivious. At lunch and dinner, if I served with a big sharing plate, they immediately took all without leaving any of me. So I served them separately with a single serving next time. They complained it was too small. Such was my life. In the end, I kept my own portion on the side before serving them and ate it secretly after they finished. I had been trying my best to not explode with anger, but I finally had enough, and was about to plead with Eric for moving out, but… Hey, I bought a new apartment. I will take you to see it. You'd like it for sure. I was flabbergasted. We never discussed such a matter, and where did the money come from? I was rushed to go and see it with him. It was a brand new apartment building in the center of the town. There was a mall, school, government office, and post office nearby. It was in a very convenient location. The apartment was just finished built a couple weeks ago. We entered the room at the corner of 8th floor. It was unbelievably bright, big, and had a great view. It was almost perfect. The moment I was about to ask him about the most important matter. My parents say they really want to live here. I bought it with the sale of their house and all the savings. Isn't it amazing? What? What the hell did he say? It was his parents' wish? Spend all the saving that was supposed to be for our son's education and our retirement? What in the world was so amazing about it? How could you do such a selfish thing? Please cancel the contract. I was in total panic and begged him to cancel. Huh? We just start saving again. Anyway, I don't need you to telling me what to do with my own money. A housewife has no say in this. He snapped back at me. You told me to quit my job and stay at home. The word divorce popped into my head and I ran out of the apartment. When I got home, my father-in-law was watching TV and my mother-in-law was busy on the phone. I hurried to collect the necessary things and pack them in the bag. Then I scrolled down Let's Divorce on a piece of paper and left it with my wedding ring on the desk. I rushed out of the house carrying Mark, who was half asleep. Let's get a room in the motel for now. 
We were wandering the street on foot without knowing what to do next. Then I heard a woman's voice calling me. Stacy, isn't that you? Oh my god, is it? I turned around and knew immediately who she was. It's me, Amy. Remember me? Such a long time. She was my high school friend. We kept in touch after graduation, but we eventually became estranged. She got divorced from her husband who cheated on her and came back to her hometown last year. I told her about what had been going on in my life and mentioned divorce as well. She smirked and said, I know the best divorce lawyer. I will pass you his contact. The lawyer happened to be the same guy with whom I had a crush in high school. I remembered him clearly. I wanted to give him a birthday present. But there were already many decorations and gifts around his locker. I went to another locker he used for the tennis club, but it was also the same. So I took a bus to his home, but this time his mailbox was too small, and there was a barking dog in front of yard that I couldn't get to the porch. I didn't have the courage to directly give it to him, so I gave up and went home. A bittersweet memory of my youth. I got the location and phone number of his office and thanked Amy over and over when we parted. I couldn't waste a second, so I went directly to see him after that. I didn't book an appointment ahead of time, but I just needed to do something. A friendly middle-aged woman in the front assisted me and said I was in luck that there was a cancellation. She even offered to babysit Mark and took me to the office. I waited for a little while, then Adam. Wait, Mr. Jackson showed up. He was handsome back then, but his good look was polished by age and he was gorgeous. Not only his face, but his body looked toned, and the way he carried himself in the suit was to die for. Compared to him, Eric was like Gollum. Thanks for waiting. I'm Adam Jackson. Nice meeting you. He introduced himself as he pulled out his business card. I did likewise, but I noticed my voice was shaking. I apologized for showing up without an appointment, and then briefed him on the reason for my visit. He started asking me questions, but I had a hard time focusing. On top of his good appearance, his voice was a beautiful tenor. As I was listening to him, I couldn't stop imagining him getting better with age like George Clooney. We were in the office for about an hour and a half. It was the happiest time of my life in a long while. I thanked Adam and the woman vigorously before I left. Mark had been a good boy all this time, and I swore to myself to be strong for him. While I got temporary custody, Adam continued negotiation with Eric Atoni. Of course, he wasn't willing to settle easily and was too carried away by his race that he couldn't even think straight. Hence, we went to a trial. Don't worry, it happens often. I got this. Adam tried to soothe my anxiety. I got a ride from him to the court on the day of our trial. As soon as I got there, I felt a knot in my stomach. I was going to see Eric for the first time since I left. When he saw me enter the room, he immediately grimaced at me. You bitch! What the hell do you think you're doing? Who took care of you all this time? You owe me! He looked like he was about to jump on me, so the security and his lawyer restrained him and dragged him out of the hallway. I was horrified. Even if we divorced, he might take revenge. I could hear him screaming, and his lawyer said, it's going to have a negative effect. And the worst case, the police. Then it became quiet. We went through the hearing without an incident after that. Mark and I were offered to stay with Amy's parents for the time being. They ran a local diner and hired me as a waitress out of their kindness. In addition to that, they had an unused trailer in their backyard, which they offered us to stay in. One night, I don't know how they found out, but Eric's parents showed up at the house. They tried to cross the yard toward my trailer, and Amy's parents stopped them. Hey, come out, you coward! Give us Mark! 
I heard them shouting. Amy signed me to hide and went out to deal with them. If you don't leave now, we'll call the police. As she said this, she was already calling. They realized the seriousness and tried to run away, but Amy's parents held them in place. The policeman arrived within a minute. After hearing both sides, they escorted in-laws back to the car and made sure they drove away. I frantically apologized to Amy and her parents and started packing my things, but they stopped me and told me it was safer to stay with them. Your divorce drama is quite entertaining. I'm so geared up to fight with you. Wait. I felt threatened for my life here. Came to think of it, she was into Spanish soap operas. Two months later, thanks to Adam, I was able to get good alimony, custody, and child support. I could finally cut all ties and move on with my life. I can live freely doing whatever I chose to do. I held Mark tightly in my arms. He needs to be reassured that I would always be by his side. Before I parted with Adam, I not only thanked him for the job he had done, but finally told him that I actually knew him from high school. He didn't remember me, but he was kind to tell me that I could count on him if there was anything. Later on, the rumor of my in-laws incident spread in their neighborhood and Eric too was seen by the neighbors as an abusive husband. They were too embarrassed that they moved to another town. Eric had sold a new apartment and paid me half of the profit. He was in debt from the trial and still had to pay me alimony and child support, so he lived in a trailer park. I had been afraid of his retaliation against me, but he wasn't as stupid as I thought. He never tried to get in touch with me. As for the in-laws, even after the first incident, they had been warned by the police they kept coming to see me, so they eventually got arrested. After spending some time in the pen, they both got ill and were sent to a facility by Eric. As for me, I still work at the diner. Hey Stacy, have a break. Let's get something to eat. Thanks, yeah, let's eat. I take off my name tag and sit down in a booth. Amy joined with a cheeky smile on her face. So, how's it going with Adam? Direct to the point, huh? Of course, I want to know everything. Adam had asked me out a little after our last meeting, and we started seeing each other. He is supposed to meet Mark officially this weekend. I tell Amy about it. Wow, Mark's finally meeting him. Where are you guys going? Who suggested bringing Mark? She's so excited with many questions. Good food, good friends, and a re-encounter with my old crush. I've had terrible experiences, but I'm glad that I had the courage to get out of my old life because now I'm standing at the end of the tunnel. I feel grateful and blessed to be able to stay with Mark more than anything. I will live my own life surrounded by good people supporting each other from now on.